ribbons and um, that kind of driver. When I first started getting involved in all of this, of course, I, I, I really got invested in, at, at first, you know, the first thing I ever heard was an electrostat, which was a quad, and then later on, magnet planers, mm -hmm. which are a kind of a ribbon. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think it's confusing to people because most people have, oh, BMWs mm -hmm. or they're, they're, they're what we would call dynamic drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, I mean, why would you think, wh why is it that most loudspeakers, call it 90% of loudspeakers, don't use ribbons and electrostats and all that? Because they seem like they're a much better way to go. Well, yeah, there, there's a lot to like about them. You know, a ribbon or an electrostat, the idea of directly driving the diaphragm evenly across its surface. Yeah, yeah. You know, a, a, a normal woofer is kind of a Rube Goldberg where you, you have a coil of wire and you have a former and you have all these translational components, you have suspension components, you're gluing to a cone, you have surrounds. All of that, those joints and different materials are sources for distortion. Sure. So to think, well, I can eliminate all that and directly drive the diaphragm. Yeah, just have a piece of plastic that's right. moving yeah. back yeah. and forth, yeah. It, there's a lot to like there. And that that's actually you know, where a lot of the performance benefit comes from is that you have, with a ribbon or, or planer drivers, you, you have super duper low mass. In fact, the the mass is less than the air load that it's touching, that it's driving. Mm -hmm. So it's intrinsically very high, highly damped. And and that's where a lot of cone and dome drivers fail is basically because... So, of, well, hold on. What does it mean it's intrinsically damped? What does that mean? Well, if you were to imagine hitting a bell and it rings... Well, cones and domes have these oil can resonances or bell mode resonances where they're not moving all as one piece. They're actually in breakup, they call it, where it, it's resonating. And partially is because it's driven from coil. You have this cone and dome flexing. Got it. And if, it, if you're evenly driving the, the whole surface of a ultra low mass diaphragm and also the diaphragm is super duper low mass, it's able to stop very quickly. Mm -hmm. And also there's... It can also start very quickly because there's essentially no inductance. So the coil of wire in a, in a woofer is what resists, you know, changes in current. And having this simple pattern of traces on a, on a planer, there's essentially no inductance. So you don't have a lot of the kinds of distortions you have in, in a, a woofer or a traditional tweeter in a planer or ribbon. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a different set of problems with it. And I think the, the main issue... That, that why people don't use them is that they need to be physically larger for a given frequency oh, range. Sure, because they can't move as far. They can't move as far, not nearly as far. So, so a cone can move an inch, a half right. an inch, or whatever. And and how far can a ribbon move? You know, in the in the range of a millimeter. In the range of a millimeter. Yeah. yeah. So it ends up being for a given frequency range the ribbons are much larger and so they become in some cases two directional that can actually be an advantage depending on what you're trying to do yeah because uh, electrostats are like that electrostats you have to put your head in a vice right yeah 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 and and the, you know it's it's a matter of they don't lend themselves to smaller form factors and other applications sure and also you know planers and ribbons and electrostats are expensive they yeah. just uh, why are, why are they expensive well part of it is each unit is a bit of a science project. It's not axisymmetric, so the traditional assembly techniques of having it on a, uh, a rotating turntable where you're glue, you can glue up all these different round speakers. Yep. It, there's all you know millions and millions of dollars of infrastructure behind. Oop, I'm touching the table. Uh, behind <laughs> assembling cone and dome drivers and just massive economies of scale. There's a few companies that have tried to do that with planers. Uh, Harman Automotive actually licensed a, a, a planer design that they put in some cars. And okay. in cars, I mean, they, they cost the speakers in cars down to the mill. I mean, less than a penny. They're, they're focused on yeah. that kind of costing. And so they came up with robotic assembly lines for, for planers and really were trying to make them ultra low cost. But... Uh, the, the process of making the diaphragm on a planer, uh, it's a chemical photo etching process, mm -hmm. is ex more expensive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the magnet materials, uh, rare earth magnets, you need to use more magnet 
for a given amount of performance. And magnets are expensive. Magnets are expensive. So there's a lot of things um, on the positive side for cost in ribbons and planers, but I'm, I'm sorry for performance, but but negative sides for cost yeah. and uh, you know the infrastructure, the raw materials. Yeah. So basically, they cost more. I mean, people would use them if they could. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There you go.